Hi guys, hi. Today I'm really excited to bring you such a treat. I think that sometimes we really get stuck in this place that we're supposed to be one thing, but we have this whole other side of us that really wants to live and to exist. And not only is it phenomenal, but it's really pure and really delicious. And I get to interview this beautiful woman and bring her to you today who has found a way to do just that. I have got Edie Jones with us today. Oh my goodness, if you haven't gotten the book yet, you absolutely must. Ultimate Release Consequences. I mean, don't you just want to get it just because of the title? <laughs> so I'm really excited to have you here, Edie. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on this show. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. I am excited to have you. And you guys, look, this is the other fun thing I want to tell you. This is actually Edie's first interview. So we're getting her in the raw. It's absolutely <laughs> so uncensored and so un, un anything. It's so beautiful. And I look forward to it because, you know, as I'm sure she's going to be able to tell you six months ago, this is not what she thought she'd be doing with her life. And today it's still really exciting, even if it's really, really new. Right? Right. Absolutely. Super yeah. brand new. I have no idea what's happening most days still. So I'm just kind of hanging in there trying to pursue it, you know? <laughs> oh, I do. So let's start off. First of all, I think when I think of inspired interviews, I want to know what inspired you to be doing what you're doing. What was life like before you were here? Uh, yeah, but so before I was here, I was working in a job that I really didn't like. I was getting up every day, working for the man, really unhappy. And not like it wasn't, I, it wasn't fulfilling, it wasn't challenging, I didn't feel like I was using my skills, and it wasn't what my heart wanted. Like in, inside of me, I wanted to be doing something different, and I didn't know what the something was, uh, and I was just really deeply unhappy. And then what was happening internally? I mean, what does this look like when you're like, so here I am, I'm, I'm doing this thing I don't necessarily love, and P.S., I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to go write a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the book happened by accident. Uh, it was something that I just – I. Uh, was seeing somebody at the time I wrote it and I had intended to just uh, shoot off a couple of like sexy paragraphs to him while he's on vacation and just thinking oh, it would be something nice to keep us connected and the more and more I wrote uh, the dirtier it got like it was just this filthy sort of sexy thing and I was like oh, I didn't even know I could say those things uh, and I really enjoyed feeling what I was feeling and saying what I was saying and somewhere in the middle, I realized I wasn't even talking about sex. Like it was this whole metaphor for my life and just my faith and my relationship with God. And um, and as it all came out, I was like, uh, I just saw this much deeper connection between my sexuality and my spirituality. And for that reason, I really wanted to put it out there. So now let's talk about this from the astrology standpoint, because this becomes very, very fascinating when we look at the fact that you are um, a Capricorn. So you are in, and by nature, ruled by the plan and by the structure and oh. tradition and holding it down. <laughs> so I, you know, had the, the, the great privilege to walk with you as you were making this transition. But, you know, let's talk about that for a minute. What, what was it like where you're just oh my God, you are like the tradition sign. <laughs> and you find yourself being like, oh my gosh, I feel free when I move towards this other thing. What has that looked like for you, you know, since this all started? Uh, yeah, so that's been a real challenge. I continued to pursue looking for other employment in this area where like, gee, I have a degree and that's what I'm supposed to do. That's what I've worked for, you know, my adult life. Like, that's the practical, logical, well thought out, well planned, super smart thing to do. And it wasn't what I wanted. I'm like, I, and that's so against my nature as a, as a Capricorn or, you know, what, whatever, however you want to say that. And it was really, really uncomfortable. Like the more and more I started to explore my sexuality and my relationships, uh, the more of those things grew and developed. And I just kept talking to my God about it, like, really? Like, this is the area of my life that's doing well? Like, sex? <laughs> <laughs> Which I support fully for you. <laughs> yeah, 
and it was so contradictory to what I really thought um, my life was supposed to look like. Like I thought it was supposed to look planned and logical. And, uh, and so the name Edie Jones, when I was trying to come up with a pen name that was, that said what I needed it to say, the name Edith is, um, what it means is rich in war. And I really felt like that name was true to uh, the, the author because it's this really deep inner conflict, not just in her sexuality, but in how she's living her life and in how she's moving from uh, one thing to another. Yeah, well, my gosh, that's so fantastic to hear even how the pin name came around. I think that's really, really cool. <laughs> so now you're out. This is it. You've ah. a book. You've, you've, you've done the thing. We have a website. I mean, you're completely legitimately your own business over there, right? Yes. yes. So can you take us just for a moment here through the transition of actually leaving that traditional workspace into being your independent company? What, what did that look like, feel like for you? Yeah, I hadn't planned to do it. I had thought, okay, well, I'm going to just, I'm going to keep writing these stories and stick with this job I'm in until things kind of level up and just sort of see where that goes. And as my discomfort grew in being in my job, I really had to just sort of look at my finances again, really see where I was at, see what I could comfortably do. And I just decided if I woke up one more day and hated the idea of going to work, I was going to quit when I got there. And so I did. <laughs> <laughs> And I didn't have a super solid backup plan. I didn't have a business plan. I just knew what I wanted to say and what I wanted to talk about. So it's been now um, a about a month and a half since I left the job. And the transition has been slower and way more frustrating than I anticipated. Uh, you know, so what I'm looking to do is a little bit of freelance editing work. I'm hoping to create a, a space where other people can market their erotica because as I have been exploring that side of the industry it's a really challenging space for people who are independent authors out there to be able to market uh, so i created a website that kind of um, is hopefully going to help promote that services but i also started a blog there which is where i really want to talk to people about sex and spirituality so please everybody visit the website and hope <laughs> subscribe i hope you'll like what i have to share um, you know, and, and I've got a business model I intend to follow for writing more stories. I intend to be releasing one either later tonight or tomorrow, and I have another one planned for next week. So it should be a rapid release, super sexy month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I am really excited to see this pan out. And I think one thing you identified that is so key, and I really am excited to talk to people about, is that you saw that there wasn't a space in the market for what you wanted to do. So you created a space for your tribe to also find you. And that is so significant because I say over and over again, find your tribe, find your tribe, which means you go to the people that are like you, who can support you growing in this way that you feel called towards, but also that you accept, you know, some outside wisdom into your life to teach you how to do these things. So you have, in effect, just created a space for tribe members to come find you. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're out there and they know where some other locations are, please point me to them. Like I want to find some other people out there who are trying to do the same thing I'm trying to do because we're dirty. <laughs> we <got it>. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And I, and I have to tell you guys, if you truly haven't acquainted yourself with Edie and if you haven't read the book, it is this solid place of as a person, I can read it and I can just, I was, <laughs> I was super excited. Okay. But I'm kind of, <laughs> But at the same time, I felt the spiritual link that was there. And I was like, this is so much more than just sitting down and reading erotica. This is so much more than some fake fantasy moment I can be a part of. I could feel the connection that this person came through. So I know that you guys would probably be able to feel that as well. So Edie, okay. Now along the way, you have also, before you created your tribe, you had to go find other teachers. What did that look like for you? What new things did you have to go learn that have been completely uncomfortable and foreign to you? And how did you do it? Yeah, interestingly, so I, I always watch your videos and I watch whatever my monthly scope is. And sometimes I get real frustrated. I'm like, come on, you tell me to go find my people. And I give their, like, first of all, I don't go out. So I don't <laughs> find people. Like, <laughs> uh, and what has happened is, um, 
people already close to me in my life have surfaced with information that I need at the right time. And I've also had the good fortune of uh, building some connections through some other networking. And I've, so I've got to link up with another independent author who I've been able to get some um, business perspective from and some other information from. And uh, it, so that part is really, really challenging for me. And it's just been like piece by piece, learning what questions I even need to ask when I'm talking to other people. Right. That's, <laughs> let me tell you what, I do know that in developing this channel, people are like, well, did you ask this? And I'm like, no, I didn't know I cared about that. But I mean, I guess I know now. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's very much so. I think if you've never experienced this, um, it is an unfolding of you personally, as well as professionally. And it's like your life is just happening one moment at a time, really, truly. So in that, <laughs> you're now an independent business. What is your unfolding daily routine look like? Has that, mm -hmm. did you just hit the ground running and you were like, this is it, I'm gonna write a book. Oh, gonna oh God, it's stormy no. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I think I, I, when I left my job, I just decided, okay, well, I'm not gonna put too much pressure on myself for the first couple of weeks. Like I had an idea for things that I needed to get up and running so that I could sort of get established and start get some freelance work moving for myself to, to get some money coming in the door. Um, you know, but then it was like, create a website. Well. I had to learn how to create a website and so I happen to have a friend who knows how to create a website and she tells me where to go and kind of what to do and um so my daily routine has been scattered and uncomfortable because I'm a plan like give me the plan I will execute the plan don't just let me like go out there willy-nilly trying to figure out how to operate in the world so it's been a real adjustment for me personally to kind of get up every day and figure that out. And the best that I've come to, and it's worked well for me the last couple of weeks, is to, you know, Sunday nights before I'm getting ready to start my week, I actually will plot out, like, by a section of hours each day, like, what things I need to tackle, what appointments do I have, how do I need to be present for other people in my life, and and uh, the hours around that I fill in with the work that I need to do. And sometimes it's late nights at midnight at my computer cranking out sexy stories. <laughs> The struggle is real. Yeah, I'm <laughs> <you that. laughs> So now along this process as well, I mean, with all of this developing, you just put this whole last year kind of in perspective. What is the thing um, about yourself that you've been the most surprised to find out that you maybe didn't know before? How much I still care what other people think. Mm -hmm. oh, like, yeah. oh my gosh, I, I just really thought I was past all that. You know, I'm a grown woman and I thought, oh, I'm just making decisions and living my life. And, and here I am and I'm doing, first of all, I'm doing a thing I never, I, I've always wanted to write books ever since I was a kid. I just never thought this would be the kind of thing that I would write. And I'm like, oh my God, what are they going to think? And what are they going to say? And what if so-and-so finds out? And like... <laughs> That's when you call your astrology friends and they're like, oh my God, when is the next one coming out? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much, yeah, that's exactly it. And you know, and all the people close to me, they've, they've read my first story and everybody just loves it and is so supportive and so encouraging. And, and so, you know, I really just have to pursue my heart on this one. So how have your relationships changed in your life? And energetically, how do you feel like life has changed since you stepped into, yes, it's absolutely scary and it has no structure, but it's exactly what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, so the minute I made the decision and the minute I started pursuing it as, uh, or knew that I was going to have to pursue it, um, all the relationships in my life that weren't just unconditionally loving really fell away. And it's been a painful and interesting process. Um, and it chokes me up a little bit talking about it for sure. Um, it's been a painful process to, to look at the relationships that I thought were really close to me and understand that they weren't, weren't unconditionally loving and couldn't support me through everything that I was going to do. And I had to let go of that and press on anyways. And so that's been interesting. But I know, too, that the, the, the people I need to support what I'm going to do will come at the right time. Absolutely, right? Like the universe does not leave holes. It's actually not a big fan of that whole situation. So it's kind of nice to kind of, and we're getting ready to come out of retrograde. So things can have more <gasps> <can't> <laughs> <laughs> I'm like holding my breath, please. <laughs> yes, oh my gosh. And we are just, we are just almost there. I mean, we're like two weeks awake, a week and a half ish away. I mean, it's almost there. So during this time, too, you said you listen to the scopes. And is there any other way that you're also 
using astrology or incorporating it into your life or find it as a useful tool? Uh, you know what? I, I think um, astrologically speaking, the thing that I pay the most attention to is the moon cycles. And so I have a, a couple of different times of the month. I will do a, a new moon sort of ritual and a full moon ritual uh, for myself that, you know, varies month to month. Maybe it's candles, maybe it's crystals, maybe it's a little tarot, and I'll just uh, do that. And, you know, at the beginning of the month on the new moon, I really is when I set my intention. Like, what is it that I want to create in the month coming? And, you know, the more that I've stayed focused on that cycle, um, things have really changed dramatically. Yay. Oh my gosh. Well, I am so excited for everyone to visit your site and to come to know you and to come to know the work that you're working on. And I cannot wait to see where this goes. I mean, like I, again, am still just so excited for the next one. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping that'll be like, like I am just in the final stages of getting the next one put together and it, it should be today or tomorrow. Cross your fingers. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's touch on that really quickly before I let you go. So in this, you self-publish. Correct. How did you learn to do that? <laughs> uh, I talked with some friends who were already self-publishing and I read like I read on Amazon I did research on the computer because really you know at that stage I wasn't considering leaving my job I was still looking for something that was just going to fit what I thought I was supposed to do um, so I wasn't looking for any real outside assistance so it was a lot of reading and a lot of research uh, and just going through the steps and figuring out what that process was. And I made mistakes. The first day I published it, I spelled the title wrong. Like, <laughs> oh my God, I had to, I was like, oh my God, it's live and it doesn't, it's not even spelled right. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the moment of chaos. And now, now, you know, you've been in the game for a minute and it's like, oh, nobody will see that for at least 20 minutes. Let me think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> right. And today it's like, yeah, let's just whip out a cover. It's not, yeah. it's, it, it's, you've been, amazing to watch grow truly and to see your comfort level especially since you are a Capricorn to see you be like okay today's a little bit unstructured but guess what I created a book cover I'm like <laughs> fine <laughs> oh yeah that book cover boy that's a process too with erotica just so you know if you're out there publishing that be careful where you get your photos <laughs> oh there you go you've been given a tip from a tribe leader there you have it well Edie tell us where we can find you so that everybody can come visit you and buy your book you can find me at uh, kit kittensmusings.com. Um, yeah, that's it. That's where I'm at. <laughs> and, and, and the book is available on Amazon. So if you're a part of, yeah. um, you can either do the Kindle Unlimited and then you can read it or you can just go buy it. I suggest buying it because you might want to highlight a couple pages and be yeah, like, Yeah, I think you're going to want to read it more than once. I know I do. Yeah, okay, well, let me tell you, there's like a couple parts that I'm like, I can't even whisper those words without their <laughs> <laughs> All right, Edie, thank you so much for being with us today. I can't wait to, for everybody to come and visit you. And I just thank you again for having the courage to step out and do what you feel called to do because it is a scary leap, but darn it if it isn't worth it. Thank you so much for having me and all the encouragement and support. I just so appreciate it. You're so welcome. Okay, bye, Edie. Bye.